everyone, welcome back to our LGBT plus Minecraft series. I'm Yan. Hi, I'm Lawrence. Yep, Lawrence is here with me. Ooh. And we have a brand new second episode. Yay! Uh, today we're actually going to talk about finding what identities make you comfortable. I identities in general when it comes to LGBT plus. Some people really care about them and and they're very personal and, and some people don't don't really care care for them very much. When you're in the middle and you're not sure, there's a whole big journey you can go through. And honestly, our whole lives are probably interacting with gender and exploring and, and just figuring out what we like. Uh, fun fact, before we started recording, a creeper came up and actually blew up the area. So yeah that, don't mind the cobblestone don't just, just don't worry about it don't look just, don't look at don't it look, don't look at well, it well no if you're looking at it don't okay is this area gonna be our official first miniature base i think so i kind of like base. i kind of like how it actually gen generated like that that was really cool of minecraft um because we didn't exactly have the greatest spawn ever like the tundra biome was not very nice. It would be nice to to get some base vocabulary down because some people might be more or less familiar or just to clarify when we say certain words what we mean by them. So when it comes to LGBT plus identities, in general, they can be separated into two broad categories where one is gender identity and the second category is sexual orientation. So, gender identity is how I think of it is what you well, it's what you identify yourself as. It's what it's what you feel you are, who you feel you are. And gender can vary between cultures and vary across time and history. So depending on what culture you live in, um, sometimes I think people get a little confused. They conflate gender with expression. So gender is an identity of who you are and expression are things you like and maybe how you present yourself. So in one culture, anyone who identifies as a man, in general, they might have long hair. Whereas in a different culture, men might have short hair. The things you like, the jobs you have, the way you act, does not equal the same thing as your gender identity, who you are. Even though Yun and I kind of identify under somewhat of like the same umbrella, we both have different ways of finding comfort in our own identities. And that and like that just naturally varies between people. There's as much as like we have our little funny stereotypes and all of like ways that you can ways to like kind of relate to other LGBT people. It's like you you really have to find what makes you comfortable and ultimately what makes you happy with your identity. And even if we just take the two probably most common categories of, of a man and a woman. Like, women are very diverse. Women can have a lot of different thoughts and feelings about being women as well, and, and why they enjoy being a woman or feel neutral about being a woman. So that applies to all other gender identities as well. The second category is sexual orientation, broadly, which in itself is kind of restrictive because there's also like platonic ac attraction and sexual attraction. But in general, I'm just gonna say sexual orientation. And that doesn't have to do with who you are. That has to do with who you like. Just because you're one gender doesn't mean you're immediately a certain sexual orientation. They're not, they're not related. They're separate and distinct, but often they interact with each other I have a question for you, Lawrence. Um, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> why, why is your gender identity important to you? Well, yeah, that's the thing. The thing is, I ask myself the, that question every single day. So um, you hit me with a hard one, Yun. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> I question this every living moment of my life. Um, I feel like something that was really important to me is that as much as like uh, we're currently growing up and like seeing a, uh, a society that just that doesn't really associate too much of your gender to like of what you can do or what you can wear ultimately it really doesn't matter too much of your gender then why why I feel the need to change it it's like because it makes me feel good in the end it makes me feel good to kind of have some sort of identity that I can I can give myself and and enjoy and kind of express myself through a certain through a certain way it's a weird sort of like need to enjoy like everything that that every single type of because for me since the fluidity is there it's like this kind of weird need to enjoy every single aspect of the goodness of each and all i don't know if you identify as transgender specifically but personally i do for me taking the the identity of trans is still a bit hard for me because it's still kind of like for me, it still feels a little bit too binary. As much as I know other other trans folk will most likely not see it as binary in any way, shape, or form, but like the way that I grew up and processed the identity is a bit different, and it kind of that kind of affected it. A transgender person, so first of all, it's an adjective. Usually, it's it's attached to a gender identity to indicate that that person. Um, does not identify with the gender they were assigned at birth. But because you still enjoy certain aspects of femininity, which is largely associated with, in general, being a woman, um, it doesn't have to be, but because I was brought up as a woman, and you were largely brought up as a woman, that's maybe just the lens we see it through. Yeah, you're not, like, rejecting that completely. It's still a part of you, but you've just expanded you are more accurately reflecting how you feel about your gender and who you are. Like right now, since I'm like trying to, to slowly come out to other people, the the kind of idea of being associated to like, to like womanhood is kind of weird, but I hope to at least one day be able to kind of still accept it because there's some aspects I still enjoy and I kind of like having that area where I can go in between identities and and enjoy what I've kind of been given but also expand on it and look at new things. There will be some days where where like I'm okay with other pronouns as well besides they them and it's and it and it can vary even though my preferred ones may be they them, I'm still okay with anyone calling me under others. And maybe one day I'll ask people to specifically call me by certain ones. I've seen like other people who are who are gender fluid who like they'll have like a bracelet that fits like a certain color they want she her. If it's a certain color they want he him. If they're wearing like seven different bra bracelets, then you can call them seven different pronouns that day, kind of thing. Which is pretty cool. That is actually really awesome that you that you can do that. Are you making a farm in the middle of this ocean? Salty. <laughs> Why? Our wheat is going to be so salty. And it's going oh to taste God. so good. Our it's gonna be bread really is going to be salty. Bro, we don't even need to add salt to the bread. It's already going to have the salt infused into it. We're going to be like mountain goats. Like scraping off the salt. I guess I'll talk about myself since I identify as non-binary. Yeah. And... Something when I was trying to find my comfy place with a with an identity Education, I think is a really important factor. I might have known the word transgender When I was in middle school But I had a very limited definition of what that could encompass and usually the resources I was getting information from weren't necessarily the most well educated themselves <laughs> so i had a very like limited pool of knowledge there's i think a second layer of seeing representation of a more complex example of what that could look like 
and be like. And one of the best examples of that is just meeting someone in person or taking the time to learn about someone in real life if they're if they're sharing kind of like we are their experiences and thought processes on the internet. Of course, that's not as effective and has its own, I guess, issues sometimes, but maybe at a certain period of time you resonate with one thing and then as you learn and grow in your own life experiences and the people you meet and the things you learn that you may change your feelings may change and that's that makes sense like that's not necessarily a a red flag it's not necessarily that you were being dishonest it's just you got new information and you learned and you adapted to it i had certain qualms with (laughs) being a girl but for the large part growing up my issues weren't big enough to cause any like major concern you know and I think I hear from a lot of people who were raised as women the conflict of I'm not sure if I'm uncomfy in my gender because I don't identify as a woman or if I'm uncomfy because I do identify as a woman and women face sexism I would think, okay, if I'm unhappy about a hypothetical situation I may be placed in, would I also be unhappy if one of my friends was placed in that same situation who was who was a woman? Essentially, I was observing other women around me and, and kind of seeing like, okay, are you upset by this? Because I'm upset by this. And sometimes my friends who were women would be like, yeah, that sucks, or... Yeah, I've had similar experiences. But then as I started getting older, I started noticing an increase in things I was unhappy with that a lot of my other friends or people I was observing just didn't seem to have a problem with. Like they were fine with being a woman, essentially, I guess is what it comes down to at the end of the day. um, There were so many grievances and so many uncomfy things and why does the world work that way? Or why do I have to behave a certain way? Or why is this expected of me? I did not like being a woman. (laughs) It was not working for me. Even in a more accepting society where women can take up any job, can have a variety of family structures, there was more to it than that. Man was just even more alien and not, not great. I could pick out a couple things that I was like, yeah, the, that seems like something I would enjoy if I was perceived that way. But for the majority of things, it didn't seem to be what I was looking for. And so I was stuck in a weird limbo of being very distraught, also not liking the alternative that was presented to me at the time, being a man. And then I learned about non-binary. <laughs> I was surprised a little bit because when I read the definition I was like hey that is a word with a definition of my life experience and nothing's really changed I didn't find anything new I just found a word that described what I had been trying to express I think non the non-binary identity gender fluid is more recent in 2021 the year that we're filming But if you go back to, I want to say, like, 1950s, 1960s, the word transgender was not common, was not a common word. There were a lot of other words that were being used to describe maybe tangential experiences to being transgender. But even that, which growing up, transgender didn't seem like a new word to me. Yeah, and now it's now it's pretty widely adopted, I'd say. We do need new words to represent a certain nuance because it it's significant to enough people and it's useful because those people want to use it. You can't expect to define us through only like a limited amount of identities and words. You're just always going to have stuff develop and you're always going to find new ways to identify what you're feeling. I think on the other hand though, people may not necessarily be able to relate right away and they may be questioning why is this word important or useful and that is also completely fine to 
be questioning those things. So very quickly, non-binary is a is a it could be a gender identity or somewhat of a umbrella term to describe someone's gender or a collection of genders that are not woman and man 24 7 all the time i don't have fluctuating feelings about my gender i feel constant like it, it never really changes but what i do feel is not is not adequately described by woman or man all right moving on to sexual orientation Let's do a broad definition sweep again for sexual orientation. I think really it can be better categorized or broadly categorized into two subcategories of romantic or platonic attraction versus sexual attraction. And to some people, the difference is very important. To other people, they're very closely related and the difference is not as significant. And bo both of those are okay. Sometimes the word is focusing more on trying to describe who you're attracted to. And sometimes the word is more of a, is describing the category of attraction. So aromantic means broadly, from what I understand, that you don't really have necessarily romantic or platonic feelings, but you can have sexual attraction. So someone who is bisexual, who's attracted to multiple genders, could have sexual attraction to multiple genders. Or you could just have someone say that they're bisexual and not specify. That's probably the more common one. You could also be asexual. So you don't experience sexual attraction, but you may experience romantic attraction. So it's that's the flip side. We're assuming that you know what gay and lesbian means. If someone's bisexual, they're attracted to multiple genders. But something that is sometimes discussed is also the identity of pansexual, which is what Lawrence identifies as, and that's what I identify as. Pansexual means essentially the same thing. And that can be confusing for a lot of people. Sometimes, depending on who you ask, there is a difference between the two. And you know, that's completely valid. It's kind of the same way that Lawrence and I identify as the same gender, but we view it differently. It's not, it's not necessarily invalidating how Lawrence feels or how I feel. Sometimes people mistakenly think bisexual means only attracted to men and women. And if you respect definitions based off of how the community uses them and the people who identify uses them, I would say pretty strongly that in large, Bisexuals reject that definition, and it's not something that they ever wanted to adopt. It's not something that they ever felt represented them. Or sometimes people like to claim that there's a distinction between being attracted to, for example, a woman versus a transgender woman or a cisgender woman. And cis, similar to transgender, is just an adjective. It describes someone who does identify with their gender at birth. So if someone is born and, and labeled as a woman and she feels like a woman, then she's cis. She's a cis woman. Back when I was first finding out about um, the LGBT community and like kind of identifying with it, I used to identify as bi. And then I remember one day checking like one of my online friends um, uh, like bio and they said they were pan, and I remember looking at that. Slowly when I found out more about it, I'm like, wait, this is this is more of a specific, like, d you love everyone regardless of their identity and kind of how they are and all. And I'm like, well, I kind of like that a little bit more than bi because I had been educated on kind of like the more strange definition of bi of like, oh, you only love two genders. And I was like, well, I'm not about that. But over, over time, I learned that there really is no specific differences. And even though I know that now, I still kind of like the definition and kind of identity that I've created around being pan. But it's not something that I think about every day, like, this is my identity. This is what I like. I, it's, just, it's just a way to identify myself for, for other people.
a interpretation I've heard of the difference, a difference maybe on how someone feels about bisexual versus pansexual is bisexual may be a term where someone views gender and gender really influences their attraction. It doesn't determine their attraction. It doesn't mean like, oh, if you're a certain gender, I can't be attracted to you. But it, it plays a large part in how they process things and enjoy things. And it's, it's significant. Where pansexual, someone might be attracted to multiple types of genders and they just don't think about the gender. It's, it's not, a, it's there, of course, and it's, of course, important to the person who they may be attracted to, but it's not a large upfront piece of what they're processing and experiencing. It kind of flies under the radar. Um, pro tip to anybody who is at home and not out, if you're ever talking with someone about like things that maybe you don't want your parents to hear or, like just generally if you just feel unsafe and then someone comes in you just come up with like a code word with your friend like for me and Yun it's peanut butter cups slash Halloween candy so if I go hey I kind of feel like having some peanut butter cups and I just dip <laughs> yeah it took me a second to realize but we did talk about it beforehand and it was it's a good thing to have I agree how did you end up realizing that you were pansexual or bisexual you get to a point where like um you start realizing that there was moments in your life where you went hmm i didn't just think that that person looked good or was pretty i actually genuinely enjoyed that person and thought that they were I guess in that sense, like, attractive or something. And then you realize, oh, there wasn't, like, a super defining moment where it hit me and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm this now. It was kind of like a development of, like, haha, that's a funny idea. And then you slowly start internalizing it and you go, wait, no. And then you go back to it another day and you're like, wait, maybe? It took, like, many years of just constantly questioning and see, because, like, once again, if it's 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 really taking the time to find what makes you happy and comfortable. You're just gonna have days where you're gonna be questioning and then you're gonna have days where you're not really and you're like on top of the world and it's feels great and then the next day you come back down and you're questioning. There are plenty of people who use a certain word or a certain label when talking to people for ease of language, but internally they know that their attraction is a lot more complex but they don't necessarily feel the need to have like a separate word to capture all of the complexity of it. And they feel like, you know, if someone really needs to know all the details, I'll talk to them about it. It's very natural to maybe have fluctuating feelings about anyone in general. It makes sense that that could be confusing and you may change your mind a couple of times. Sometimes, there's a lot of pressure when people come out about sexual orientation or sometimes when people are in the process of thinking about their attraction, there's a pressure to justify your attraction by your life experiences. And there's the misconception that, oh, if you only have a certain life experience, maybe you would feel a certain way or maybe it would justify a certain feeling you're having. And that is by no means a requirement. Like, like straight people don't have to go under that interrogation phase. And so neither should anyone else. Counseling is a very good tool for a lot of different things. If you don't know anyone who's gone to counseling before or anyone in your family who's gone to counseling before, it can be intimidating. It's also a very big access problem for a lot of people. It can be very expensive, or there may not be a lot of resources in their area, or their college may have limited resources if they're in college. So that's completely understandable. But talking to, talking to a friend or a trusted family member or a representative at work, maybe your job has an employee group that represents LGBT people. Talk, talk to someone. 
Talk to someone in real life it, it is, I think, the message there. Well, thanks for joining us on the second episode. Hopefully you learned a little bit about... My, my farmland. Oh, no, the farmland. <laughs> but hopefully you learned a little bit about Lawrence's experiences and my experiences on how we came to settle either long-term or temporarily with certain labels. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.